All right, we're live here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. We got Joshua Steely here and Master Distiller Harlan Wheatley. Joshua, you want to take us off? <coughs> sure. Thanks, Tim. Hey everyone, my name is Joshua Steele. I'm the brand director of bourbon here at Buffalo Trace Distillery and I'm joined by our master distiller, Harlan Wheatley. Harlan, how you doing? Glad to be here. Me too. Uh, so we have a real treat today. Today we're going to be talking about OFC. But before we get into it, let's set the stage a little bit. OFC is really a, a tribute to E.H. Taylor and the first distillery he ever built, which he called the OFC Distillery. Uh, so a little bit of history. Right around 1870, E.H. Uh, e. Taylor, who was a businessman and politician, decided he wanted to get into distillation. So he bought a small, modest distillery on the banks of the Kentucky River. And um, he uh, decided soon after buying that, that he wanted to build <coughs> something big and grand and a show place of a distillery. And after he f sort of finished that endeavor around 1872, he rechristened it the OFC Distillery. and. Um, uh, he called it that because he thought that the finest whiskey was produced in old-fashioned wood fire copper stills. Uh, so uh, over time, OFC has stood for both old fire copper and old fashioned copper, but today we simply refer to it as OFC. Um, and uh, it's something that we launched in 2017 as a tribute to to E.H. Taylor, and specifically his uh, you know show place centerpiece of a distillery that he had built uh, well over 100 years prior to that. And we're excited to get into this today. It is, it's a one of a kind tasting for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when thinking about OFC, Harlan, what stands out to you? Well, for OFC, for Buffalo Trace Distillery, it's all about the history uh, of the distillery. And, you know, we pay homage to all the work and, you know, dedication and sacrifice that, uh, you know, guys like E.H. Taylor did you know, in the 1860s, 50s, you know, in that time frame, and really expanded the distillery to the distillery we know today, and we really haven't changed. They were continuing to grow and, and expand the distillery, so really, and it, it was all about quality too. So for us, the the, uh, the standards haven't changed. You know, the, the, you know, the concept of continuing to expand and meet demand, we're still there. Great. Um. <clears throat> So we're about to taste some whiskey, but before we do, uh, there's something else different about or unique about uh, you know this brand extension for us, uh, the fact that it's a it's a vintage dated brand, which isn't very common in bourbon. So Harlan, talk a little bit about um, you know what vintage means in in this context. For OFC, it's really that really is what it's all about. The vintage is really important. Uh, way to distinguish between the different offerings you know in wine vintage just means the you know when they harvest the grapes and you know make the wine you know for this for OFC it's the year it was distilled mm -hmm. and uh, that, that really explains what you're looking at so you know today we're going to taste the 93 94 95 vintage which means it was distilled in 93 some of the ages are all different and uh, you know some of these offerings but it you know for for us it's the vintage the year was distilled so as we go through this we should expect uh, uh, some differences between because everything as an example the 1993 vintage everything in that bottle was distilled in the year 1993 and uh and so on and so forth and so you know hopefully we'll we'll taste some subtle nuances and be able to talk about that as we go through that's right but uh you want to jump right in we can this first year was the 19 we, we actually launched OFC, uh, the first one that we launched was 1980 Vintage, mm -hmm. and we did three offerings, and when we, when we did those, we did those for charity, and we were just launching the brand, just getting that word out there, and we, we were able to utilize those first three years, and we raised over $1.2 million on those first three vintages, so mm -hmm. uh, we're real proud of that, and you know, after that, we're, we're, we've uh, you know, continued the vintages, and uh, you know now these are on you know retail. Yeah, it, I think there was just about 200 <clears throat> bottles in that first batch, so to raise over a million dollars with 200 bottles is, is quite the yeah. feat. So, so this first one that we're tasting today is a 1993 vintage. Mm. And you know, as expected, you're going to get all kinds of you know, flavor, complexity, 
you know, nuances that you would get from age, uh, you know, some oxidation along the way, and it's just really a mature whiskey, you know, super complex and, you know, really good. But Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's um, <clears throat> what stands out to me is, is the, the dark fruit notes, both on the nose and the palate, and just how soft the whiskey, the whiskey <clears throat> is. You talk about oxidation and just that time in that barrel. It's 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 a very soft whiskey. It's, by the way, all of these are ninety proof, but uh, you know a good a, a good finish and the complexity for sure, hundred um, percent. You know, interesting thing, Harlan, about the, these vintages in nineteen ninety three. You know, these are time capsules. You know, and this was um, you know I think I think this one was bottled in uh, twenty eighteen, and so it was a twenty five year old bourbon. Uh, when it, uh, when, by the time we bottled it, and you know, a lot was going on in the world in 1993. And so, with each one of these bottles, we sort of include a little snippet uh, on what was going on in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, I'm just going to uh, take a look at here. But you know, Bill Clinton was sworn in as the 42nd president of the United States, so that was you know a long time ago. <clears throat> um, Jurassic Park was you know at the top of the box office, so it's neat to think about what was going on in the world you know so long ago. Yeah, I think they try to put a lot of that on the back label, right? Yeah, yeah, we had that uh, <clears throat> on these little pamphlets and underneath each bottle. And the 1994 is the next year. This happens to be the first year I came to the distillery, so I, I was able to take a tour of the distillery. So it's it's kind of cool to be able to taste, uh, f you know, the from the year that I was uh, first around. fruits. Yes, so. Mm. You know, Arlen, I, you were doing something right. Well, I picked up a little bit more butterscotch in this year, and uh, you know, just this particular sample is really, you know, really good, well balanced, and subdued from the age, and it's good. Caramels, and that's a good one. You guys talked mm. about it being 90 proof, and Nicholas Powers on Facebook does ask, and I think a lot of people would like to know, would there ever be a barrel proof, unfiltered version? of the OFC line. <laughs> well, uh, you know, somebody after our own heart, we, we you know, we, we like bourbon with a little proof on it. Uh, I guess no plans as of right now, you never say never, but uh, uh, that would mean a lot less bottles of it and there's not many bottles to begin with. Right, very limited supply, and very limited uh, amount to, to work with, but you know, don't, don't have that any time in the near future anyway. Yeah. Um, so 1994 was an interesting year also, Harlan. Uh, the Channel Tunnel is completed. Uh, so that's, you know, connecting France and England through 31 miles of, uh, you know, underwater tunnel. And then big year at the box office again. You have uh, Forrest Gump, The Lion King, uh, and some other big movies. So uh, once again, you know, just, uh, it never gets old, but this, this time capsule, you know, idea with these, these extra aged bourbons. And the whiskey itself is, um, you know, it, it uh, uh, E.H. Taylor, as you say, of topmost class, and I think I think we try to capture that essence in this particular extension of you know the E.H. Taylor brand family, and, I, and uh, I think you know when you look at the packaging as well as the whiskey inside the bottle, I, I think that we delivered or at least try to deliver and pay homage to this of, of topmost class idea. Yeah, I think E.H. Taylor would be proud of this offering. For yeah. Sure. So this last tasting is from 1995 vintage. Mm. It's definitely a, a sipping bourbon, uh, one you can enjoy, end of the world bottle, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good, you know, really good choice and, and something, something to be, uh, you know, very pleased with. I get uh, sort of our signature kind of cherry backbone on this one. You know, very front and center, especially on the nose. Um, but uh, yeah, so this one was 25 years old. We're actually in 1995. This is a sneak peek. We haven't we haven't released 1995. We're actually bottling it right now. It'll be released very soon. But um, uh, this was a uh, obviously bottled in 2020, so it's a 25 year old bourbon. And what was going on in 1995? Well. Uh, this little company called Amazon sold its first book in 1995. Huh. And uh, this little website uh, that later became known as eBase debuted as Auction Web. And so some fun facts. And then you have uh, Toy Story in the box office and uh, making its debut. Mm. So um, 
you know, some uh, a lot going on in 1995, mm -hmm. and uh, as well as seems like we were making some okay whiskey. You know, a lot has changed in you know the last 25 years or so because in 1995 the business, you know, the bourbon business was a little different. You know, people probably wouldn't ever think about paying $2,500 for a bottle of bourbon. Uh, you know, in 25 years time we've seen the demand grow and. You know, the distillery has continued to grow and uh, try to meet the demand. And uh, so the bourbon industry has changed and, uh, you know, I'm happy for it because, uh, you know, the business is continuing to reach and we're trying to go global and just a lot of, a lot of things have changed since 1995, so. Absolutely. Eric Watson on Facebook says, that's, he says, I graduated from high school that year. So it's a little, a little piece of history for him. Yeah, that's great. Um, Harlan, what, all, you know, all these whiskeys we've just tasted are, each of them are 25 years old by the time we bottled them. What's the secret to aging bourbon that long and still making a fantastic end product, you know, in, in the glass? Well, for, you know, for bourbon as you age it, if you're, especially if you're going to age something for 25 years, you have to pick the location in the warehouse, at least at Buffalo Trace, very wisely because we have such a variation in floors and you know, characteristics within the warehouse. So, uh, you know, if you know, based on anticipated use, it's gonna be really old, um, then you wanna pick second, third floor, lower floors, and, uh, you know, wanna be real careful on where you put those barrels, because, you know, if it ages too fast, it'll pick up way too much of that wood and be too stringent, you know, when you taste it. So, it's pretty important to consider the age as you're putting it away. Yeah. And just thinking about E.H. Taylor, coming back to E.H. Taylor, obviously, you know, this, this OFC was really, it's a tribute to him and his legacy. Um, uh, how, you know, talk a little bit about E.H. Taylor and how, you know, he, he sort of inspires you to this day. Well, the, he was definitely an innovator. He was a guy that looked at, you know, what kind of technology is out there? What can we utilize to make things more consistent? What can we do to increase or at least secure the quality of bourbon because, you know, I've said before, before E.H. Taylor, if you wanted to darken up a whiskey, you could spit tobacco juice in it. You know, he, he, he was the first guy to really introduce the concept of quality in, you know, in spirits. And, and really for us, we've carried that torch, you know, ever since 1870 because we, we know that, that the quality is what brings consumers back. And uh, we have to deliver that across the board on all of our, all of our whiskeys. And you know, he was really the first guy to do that. Yeah, he's definitely the father of the modern bourbon industry. So um, it's interesting. So you know, uh, so we 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 just gone through the latest, the last, the the most recent three vintages, 93, 94, 95. You know, each of these are extremely limited. Typically, we we bottle these uh, once a year in the fall and release them, you know, sort of late fall. Uh, so um, you know, but we, we've done, as Harlan, you meant, mentioned earlier, 80, 82, 83. Uh, we've done 85, 89, and 90 in 93 a couple years ago. Uh, last year was 1994, and, um, and then this year is 1995. So uh, something for us to definitely keep an eye out for uh, and everyone tuning in. And we had a question on Facebook, too. Is, is this going to continue? Is there more barrels and will there be more vintages released each year? Or each year, we'll, you know, we'll Absolutely, the plan is for us to continue to release these once a year. As you can imagine, something this old, you know, there's not a lot of barrels, of, you know, this old sitting around, you know, these these grounds, and so uh, they're extremely limited. You know, we're counting we're counting these in bottles as opposed to thousands of cases. Uh, so, uh, you know, we we've done releases as little the 1989 as an example. There's only 18 18 bottles of that for the entire world. Uh, 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 but 1994 there was a, a little over a thousand bottles so anywhere in that range but whether you're 20 bottles or or 2,000 bottles they're um, it's a big world you know so that we, we they're they're hard to come by a little bit all right guys we're, we're right at that 15 minutes we know you're both busy so we try to wrap it up is there any closing words or anything else you guys want to chat about well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, we hope uh, that this uh, this is a tribute that does E.H. Taylor proud, and, and uh, we're going to keep making more of it and doing more of it, and um, hopefully um, 
everyone will get a chance to try this at some point. Harlan? Oh, it's all good, and I thank you for joining us, and we've got more coming next week. All right, great. Thanks to both of you.